Hey everyone, welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, 3D animation, and visual effects. I'm your host, Sean Frangella, and today we're going over the second half of how to build this Avengers Age of Ultron 3D logo animation all inside of After Effects using Element 3D and lots of tips and tricks for making cool animation stuff. So in the first half of this tutorial, we built out the first half of this logo where it's extruded in After Effects using Element 3D. And we got this camera animation zooming in, some optical flares to kind of add these lights. And we've added some things like After Effects lights to cast some shadows and we we're tweaking and making improvements. So be sure to check out part one of this if you wanna get up to speed on how to do the first half of this or you could just watch this one if that's all boring to you anyway. So for the second half of this, we're really gonna focus our efforts on getting this close to our final render, doing this cool write-on animation that follows the logo and building out extra little touches like these background particles. So I'll go back to my main comp and to get that write-on effect, what I'm gonna do is take my whole Element 3D object, I'll duplicate it with Edit Duplicate and on this copy the effect, I'll just rename that E3D outlines. And I need to draw on these outlines, but I want it to really be this 3D texture. So what I can do is use the effect trap code 3D stroke to draw that on from a vector logo. And how I can do that is I'm gonna get back into Illustrator where I have my vector logo copied. And if you are looking for that, in the first half we talked about getting this asset, which you could just find pretty easily online by searching vector logo of a company and probably find it. And we're just opening this in Illustrator and then I'm gonna select all and copy. And I'll go back into After Effects. And what I wanna do is make a, another new solid. I'll call this 3D stroke. Maybe just make it a different color so it stands out. Go to okay. And I'm gonna put this above that E3D outlines layer. And I'll drag 3D stroke onto that solid and it's not gonna have anything because we need to give it some information. And if you're looking for 3D Stroke, that is a plugin from Red Giant that you can get through the Amazon affiliate link into the description for this video. It's a really fun plugin and it's really helpful for this technique and gonna really save a lot of time. So now what we can do is just paste that vector file on there and that's gonna create my outlines and I'll just solo this layer for now. And then we have this Avengers outline, which I could just take the thickness down a bit. And now if I pull back and forth on this end keyframe, it's going to animate in and out the outlines. So what I'll do is go to the beginning and put it at zero, turn on the stopwatch for end. And I'm going to go to four seconds. I'll just put that at a hundred, press U to get my keyframes and I'll have that ease in. And now if I do a RAM preview, we have these animating in on the logo, each letter separately, which is a really cool way to do this. And really what the point of this effect is, which is really gonna help us build this. And I'll just unsolo that. So what we need to do is get this to line up with our text and be seen by our After Effects camera. So on my 3D stroke layer, I'm gonna go to camera and I need to check on comp camera and it's a little off. So what I need to do is just go to transform and I'll take Z position down a bit to like negative 125 or negative 130 in this case, just so it exactly lines up. And now what we can do is take our E3D outlines. And since this 3D stroke is writing on, if it's above it, we can put this outlines layer to track mat alpha mat and just hide our original E3D. And now what it's gonna do is use this 3D stroke layer that's animating on as the track mat for that 3D layer, so we'll only see the outline. So it's a pretty cool technique. It's combining a lot of different ideas that I had about what could be used to create this animation of the outlines where it's not just a flat solid color, but we're actually getting the lighting from our 3D object. So it's gonna animate each part separately, all matching up with the camera movement as well as the actual outlines of our layer. Now, what we wanna do is have this other background one animating in while it's changing color. So what I'll do is go to about one second. I'll press T and just do a basic trans opacity animation. By putting this at zero, I'll turn on the keyframe and just go ahead to about five seconds, let's say, and I'll just turn this all the way up and just ease that keyframe in for good measure. 
And now what's gonna happen is as those are starting to animate in, you see the background extrusion and object is gonna come into space and then start changing color after the outlines finish. So we get this cool animation of all this stuff combining with the outlines coming and then the dark version kind of fading in behind it and then this transition to our red. So we're getting pretty close, let's keep going. One thing that's in the final animation is this red flare is really bright and then it tones down a bit over time and then disappears. And we don't need this blue in at the beginning at all. So on this first one, which is driving our main flare, I'll press T to get intensity, make a keyframe, and just put this to the side for kind of our later amount. And then at the beginning, I'll just turn it way up because it's really blowing out the camera. Not quite that much, but pretty close to that. And then I'll go ahead to like one and a half seconds and we'll turn this down quite a bit. And then it'll slowly go down to 75. And then at about eight seconds or so, we can take this down even further. It's where it's only a little visible, it's like 35%. And let's just ease that last one in. And then it will really blow out the light and kind of slowly come into play. And for this little white one, we want to do the opposite. I'll go to that one, get intensity, make a keyframe, then push this ahead a little bit, and then put the intensity at zero. So as the text is starting to come into view, we'll just have this one slowly come on to match up with the timing of the animation. And the last thing we want to do if we really want to push some of these effects is add some of these particle animations in the background that are going behind the logo. And we could do that with trap code particular, which is in the same red giant suite of trap code effects. And to do that, I'm going to make another new solid. This project is all about making solids and then putting plugins on it. I'll call this particles. I'll put this behind our haze layer, drag particular onto it and just solo this for now. And this is going to emit our particles and let us make some changes. But by default, it's not really doing anything interesting and anything that we want. So what I can do is go to this emitter and take the point X, Y from the center and let's we'll put it off screen on the left. So it'll be kind of blowing into the frame. And I probably don't need this many particles at all. I'll get maybe like 25 a second, just so there's a few. And if I go back to the beginning of my comp, there isn't any there yet because they're not being generated at zero. So to fix that, if I go to emission extras, I can go pre-run and just turn that up. And then it's going to generate particles before the beginning of time, which is good because we don't want to have to wait for them to start going. And now to get the look we want, a lot of that can be done in this particle setting. So what I'm going to do is take the lifespan way up so they don't disappear right away, like 25 seconds, and then they're going to live a lot longer. I'll take my size up quite a bit as well as randomize my size, and that's going to randomize the size of the particle take the opacity down to barely visible and then really pull up the opacity randomness too. And then under opacity over life, I want to twirl this down and I'll have it fade in and out with this little meter just so in case any of them come into play or disappear, we don't see it just pop out. And then I can change the color to of a reddish color and I'll probably need to take the opacity back up a bit. And then I'll change transfer mode from normal to add or screen. Let's go with add and then they'll blend together a little when they overlap and maybe it's a little too bright. So maybe I'll take opacity down a bit. We'll probably keep making changes to this as we keep going and composite it into the rest of this stuff, but this is getting as close. So that helps to get this particle look we want, but right now they're just kind of shooting out. They're not really doing what we want. So to have them animating how we want, if you go down to physics under air, this is where we can push them to the right and really have them be moving around with a little more randomness. So what I could do is turn on wind for X by turning this up quite a bit. And now if I play this, you can see that they're being pushed to the right and kind of doing what we want. And that's looking nice, but they're just kind of floating in one direction. They're not really moving around at all. And a way I can fix that is if I go to turbulence field and I'll check on visualize fields, we can turn up effect position. And what this is going to do is distort this invisible line that's kind of twisting and moving these particles around over time so they're not just going straight in one direction. And now if we take a look at that, let's see if that's getting us a little more interesting. So they're floating around a little, and the more I turn this up, 
the more they're going to fly all over the place in a little bit of randomness and keep it more interesting. And if I want them to be going faster, I could just turn this win way up, maybe affect position a little more. And if we take a look at a couple seconds of it, that's really helping a lot. That's really working a bit better. And it, to get rid of that red line, I'll just turn off visualize fields and then I'll unsolo this layer and let's see how it's looking. So that's pretty good. We might have a little too many particles now. This is kind of a lot of dots everywhere. So you'd probably take this particles a second down quite a bit, maybe only something like 10 or 15 and maybe take the opacity down. Now we can see how visible they are. And that'll give us some nice little background noise and particles blowing around behind our main animation. That gets us there. We are able to create this cool animation of the outlines going. And we got with the darker logo coming in. Now, the last thing we want to do before we render this out is we can see we have a little bit of anti-aliasing and jagged edges. So we're finally done. We can go to our E3D outlines layer, go into element again, and I'll go down to output. And we can change multi-sampling, super sampling, and even enhance multi-sampling. And that's going to add render time, but make it look really nice and really fix these problems. So if I turn multi-sampling up to 16, super sampling up to 4, and check on enhance multi-sampling, it's going to go a long way with smoothing those out and getting nice, clean 3D edges. And I want to do the same thing for this other copy. So I'll go back into element there, turn on multi-sampling, super sampling, and check this box. I'm sure it's probably doing something really cool. No one really knows, but I'll check it anyway. And that's going to give us our final animation ready to go with all the stuff going and working. And that wraps this one up. I think we did a pretty good job. We got pretty close to this one. I made it with my first run of it with all of this working and everything going to try to recreate this Avengers Age of Ultron 3D animation all inside of After Effects using a bunch of different techniques and plugins and effects and ideas that I just made up along the way. So I hope you guys learned a lot. I think we got pretty close. What do you guys think? You can let me know if you think it came out pretty well, if you think it's terrible, or if you think it needs more lens flares, you can let me know on Twitter at Sean Frangella, as well as on Facebook at facebook.com slash Vital. And let me know what you guys think. You can ask questions too about this tutorial or any tutorials and interact that way. And if you want access to things like project files, you can go to patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. And this was a really fun one to set up. It was a really thorough example of lots of different animations to recreate this logo as close as I could get all inside of After Effects. So I hope you learned a lot. Be sure to check out some of the other tutorials I have on After Effects, Cinema 4D, Element 3D, and all sorts of 3D animation and VFX software and ideas. And thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.